The strategic goal of phase four and five was to determine the scope of our evaluation. The master file contains over a thousand programming narratives and most of them do not have to do with community food systems. So we needed to hone in on the data that was relevant for the project. We used a variety of tactics to get there that included the use of autocode functions and document variables. First, we did a lexical search for the term food systems and we had MaxQDA autocode the search term hits. Um, you can see here the code food system and you can see here in the document browser a couple of these hits within a document. And you can see we used an orange color to indicate those auto search and auto code hits. But we needed to make sure that we're in the ballpark with this lexical search. The research team knew whose programming narratives to expect, so we needed to review the authors of the documents that reflect in the lexical search. To do this, we first transformed our code food systems into a document variable. This allowed us to create a document set containing all documents that had the term food systems in them. The document set would be in the document system. So that would be here, this food systems document set. Since each document has its author attached, we could now quickly assess if we had the usual suspects in our document list. To do this, we had MaxQDA display the statistic of document variables and then display this in our case, we wanted to look at the authors here. And now we have a list here of the people who have written programming narratives that are in our food systems set. Checking variables like this is a good strategy when you're hunting for a data set within a bigger data set, because it can help you understand whether you may have to broaden your lexical searches, to combine your lexical searches, or to narrow your searches. Now that we knew we were roughly in the ballpark, we needed to make sure that we're excluding documents that don't have anything to do with community food systems, although they do mention the term food systems. Meaning is contextual, so just doing a lexical search is almost never sufficient. Different people may use the same term in different ways, so we needed to review our documents to make sure that they're using the terms in the ways that are relevant to the research or evaluation question. So we needed to quickly skim through all the documents in our food system set, and we needed to check for this term. To do this, we used some of the code visualization features. Um, we highlighted all segments that, we co that were coded food system, and this allowed us to find the search hits in context and to decide whether the author used the term in a way that was relevant to the project. What was really helpful was the coloring of the codes. So we could simply just look at the orange code, which is our food systems code, and just display the, the codes as color coded text. And we could really quickly skim through the document and see where the search hit was and see how this was used in the context rather than to hunting for the term um, in the document without seeing it right off the bat. If a document is relevant to our project, we coded it with a new code that we called of interest. That way we flagged all the documents that we later wanted to look at in our final data set. We then transformed that code into a document variable again and created again a document set based on this variable, the of interest variable. This way we had a list of documents that was relevant to the research focus of our evaluation team. You can see this here in our document system, our of interest set contains all the different documents, all the different programming narratives that we were interested in looking at. 